For thousands of years, history has been etched into stone and soil, telling stories of great empires rising from river valleys and ancient cities flourishing in sun-drenched landscapes. But what if the greatest human story isn't on land at all? What if it's hidden beneath the waves, swallowed by a rising sea? Imagine a world we no longer see. During the last ice age, the Earth was a very different place. Massive glaciers locked away trillions of gallons of water, and global sea levels were over 120 meters lower than they are today. That wasn't just a slight change, it was a monumental transformation. It exposed a colossal landmass, a forgotten continent that once connected Australia to New Guinea and Tasmania. This was the Sahel Shelf, a vast, fertile plain twice the size of modern-day France. For over 65,000 years, this was home to the world's oldest continuous culture, the Aboriginal people. They didn't just survive on this land, they thrived. They built communities, hunted, fished, and created a complex society on what is now the ocean floor. They lived on coastlines that are now hundreds of kilometers out to sea. But then, the world began to change. Around 18,000 years ago, the ice started to melt, slowly at first, then with terrifying speed. Over the next several thousand years, the oceans began their relentless march inland. This wasn't a sudden Hollywood-style tidal wave. It was a slow, inexorable flood that swallowed entire worlds. Shorelines retreated by over a hundred kilometers, and with every meter the water rose, another part of this ancient land disappeared forever. Ancient stories passed down through generations of Aboriginal elders speak of this great inundation. Tales of ancestral lands, sacred sites, and entire communities being lost to the sea. For a long time, these stories were dismissed as myth, beautiful legends of a forgotten time. But now science is proving them to be true. Researchers are finding compelling evidence, not just of a coastline, but of a lost world. We're not just looking for a few scattered artifacts. We're searching for the echoes of an entire civilization, perfectly preserved at the bottom of the ocean. This is a story that will challenge everything you thought you knew about ancient history and forever change how we see our world. For generations, the stories were dismissed as myth, tales passed down from elders about a time before the sea. They spoke of ancestral lands now beneath the waves, of sacred places submerged in the deep. But what if those stories weren't just beautiful legends? What if they were maps to a forgotten world? Today, a new generation of scientists, archaeologists, and geologists is finally listening. They're not just relying on old maps or dusty records. They're turning to the most advanced technology we have. Imagine a research vessel gliding silently over the ocean's surface. Beneath it, a single beam of sound, a sonar pulse, is mapping the seabed with incredible precision. They're looking for anomalies for structures that don't belong, for geometric patterns that nature could never have created. And they are finding them. In a recent expedition off the coast of Australia's Kimberley region, a team led by archaeologist Jonathan Benjamin made a groundbreaking discovery. Using high-resolution sonar, they identified a series of submerged rock formations that looked eerily intentional. These weren't random boulders. They were arranged in a precise pattern that resembled ancient fish traps, a technology still used by Aboriginal communities today, which harnesses the tidal flow to catch fish. The formations were exactly where oral traditions had said they would be. This wasn't just a coincidence. It was a powerful link between a living culture and a lost past. Think about that for a moment. A tradition passed down for thousands of years, now confirmed by a high-tech sound pulse. It's a profound validation of the world's oldest continuous culture. The discoveries don't stop there. Just a few years ago, off the coast of northern Australia, marine archaeologists uncovered what they believed to be a vast freshwater basin and a series of submerged islands that were once a critical hub of life. This area, now 50 meters below the surface, was a haven for plants, animals, and of course people. They found scattered stone tools and fragments of rock art on the seabed, irrefutable proof that this was once a thriving human landscape. These tools, these scattered rocks, they are more than just artifacts. 
They are fingerprints left by a society that faced one of the most significant environmental crises in human history. But the real story isn't just about what was lost. It's about how they adapted. How did they survive as their world slowly drowned? They didn't just retreat. They evolved. They became master mariners, adapting to a new world defined by the sea. Their knowledge of tides, currents, and marine life became their new way of life. The very thing that took their land, the ocean, became the source of their survival and prosperity. This profound story of resilience is etched into the very DNA of their culture. The science behind this is fascinating. Geologists are studying sediment cores, analyzing pollen and ancient plant life to reconstruct the prehistoric environment. They are finding traces of riverbeds that once flowed across dry land, now silent beneath the waves. Geneticists are tracing the lineage of aboriginal populations, finding connections that point to a shared history on a landmass that no longer exists. They're revealing that the genetic diversity of Australia's indigenous peoples holds secrets to ancient migration patterns and population movements, confirming that their journey on this continent was far more complex and dynamic than previously believed. But the most incredible evidence comes not from a lab, but from the people themselves. For thousands of years, Aboriginal communities along the coast have shared stories of their ancestors' journey. They tell of a time when the sea was far away and their people lived in places that are now just a memory. They describe the landscape, its rivers, its hills, its sacred sites with breathtaking accuracy, as if they had just walked it yesterday. These aren't just myths, they are oral maps, a cultural GPS passed from one generation to the next. This new collaboration between science and indigenous knowledge is unlocking a new chapter in human history. It's a respectful partnership that recognizes as that some of the greatest scientific data in the world isn't in a textbook, but in the heart of a culture that has preserved it for millennia. We're not just finding lost cities, we're rediscovering a lost part of humanity's story. One that was always there, waiting for us to listen. It's a powerful reminder that history isn't just about what happened on land, but also about what was buried beneath the vast blue expanse of our oceans. For centuries, our imaginations have been captivated by lost cities like Atlantis, mythical places of advanced technology and breathtaking architecture swallowed by the sea. But what if the truth is far more profound? What if the Atlantis we are discovering isn't a single monolithic city, but a network of thriving settlements, a sophisticated society built not from marble, but from stone, rock, and an intimate connection to the land. We've seen the evidence, the sonar maps, the scattered tools, the oral histories. Now it's time to dive deeper. Let's go beyond the fragments and imagine what a full-fledged sunken Aboriginal settlement would actually look like. Picture this, we descend through the turquoise water. The sun's light filters down, illuminating a world transformed. What we see isn't just a random collection of rocks. It's a landscape of purpose. Imagine the remains of stone houses, built in clusters along a now submerged riverbed. These weren't grand palaces, but they were perfectly adapted to their environment. Shelters from the elements, built with knowledge passed down for generations. Now follow that ancient riverbed. We come to a larger, more open area. The seafloor here is different. It's laid out in a deliberate, circular pattern. This is a ceremonial ground, a gathering place where rituals were performed, stories were told, and communities came together. Maybe the engravings on these stones tell a story of the stars or a creation myth lost to time. These are the spiritual heartbeats of a culture that once thrived here. And look beyond that. Scattered across the flat plains are intricate, man-made structures, the remains of vast, stone-walled fish traps. These weren't just simple nets. They were monumental engineering projects, designed to channel the tides and trap fish for an entire community. This isn't just about survival. It's about a sophisticated understanding of marine ecology and tidal dynamics. This level of planning and communal effort speaks to a highly organized and advanced society. These cities weren't just places to live, they were living ecosystems of culture, knowledge, and community. 
They prove that complex societies didn't need towering stone walls or vast road networks to be considered advanced. Their advancement was in their profound connection to the land and their ability to adapt and thrive. This discovery fundamentally challenges the Western-centric view of what constitutes a civilization. It proves that a society can be complex, sophisticated, and innovative without conforming to our traditional definitions. For the Aboriginal people, these discoveries are far more than just archaeological finds. They are a tangible link to a sacred past. The oral histories, once thought to be metaphors, are now revealed as literal maps to their ancestral homelands. This is an emotional and spiritual homecoming, a reconnection to a history that was feared to be lost forever. It's a powerful validation for a culture that has endured for tens of thousands of years. But this journey into the deep isn't just for archaeologists. It requires a multidisciplinary approach. We need the expertise of marine scientists to understand the currents and the delicate ecosystems that now cover these sites. We need oceanographers to model the sea level rise and understand how the sites were submerged. And critically, we need indigenous knowledge holders to guide us to interpret the findings, and to ensure that these sacred places are treated with the respect they deserve. This is a collaboration built on trust and mutual respect. The goal isn't just to unearth artifacts, it's to protect a cultural heritage that belongs to us all. The ocean floor isn't just a place for scientific research, it is a sacred library of human history, and we have only just begun to read its first chapter. We've journeyed back in time, explored a lost world, and imagined what it was like to live on a continent now hidden beneath the waves. But the story of Australia's sunken cities isn't just about discovery. It's about a race against time, a battle against nature, and a profound ethical dilemma. Underwater archaeology is one of the most difficult and dangerous fields of science. The ocean, while a perfect preserver, is also a harsh mistress. These sites, located hundreds of kilometers from shore and many meters deep, are often subject to powerful currents, low visibility, and the immense pressure of the deep. It takes a specialized team of divers, engineers, and scientists, working with state-of-the-art technology, like remotely operated vehicles, ROVs, to even begin to explore these sites. And the challenges aren't just technical. The ocean is constantly changing. Natural forces like erosion, powerful storms, and the gradual shifting of the seabed can destroy or bury these priceless historical records forever. Coral growth, while beautiful, can also engulf and obscure ancient structures, making them nearly impossible to study. It's an urgent mission to document these sites before they are lost to the forces of nature. But perhaps the biggest challenge of all isn't from the ocean, but from ourselves. The discovery of these sites raises critical questions. Should we excavate them? Should we recover artifacts? What are the ethical implications of disturbing a place that is not just an archaeological site, but a sacred ancestral homeland for the Aboriginal people? For generations, these places have been revered in oral tradition as sacred, resting places of spirits and the final home of their ancestors. They hold profound spiritual and cultural significance. Simply put, they are not just shipwrecks or ruins to be plundered for museums. They are the equivalent of sacred burial grounds or ancient temples. This is why the approach to these sites is being done with the utmost respect and collaboration. The goal is not about collecting souvenirs for a display case. It's about in situ preservation, studying and documenting the sites where they are without disturbing them. It's a respectful partnership between scientists and indigenous communities, where the communities are the ultimate custodians of their heritage. They have the final say on what, if anything, is recovered and how these stories are shared with the world. This collaborative approach is a new model for archaeology. It's a shift from a take and document mindset to one of preserve and respect. It acknowledges that the true value of these discoveries lies not just in the objects themselves, but in the knowledge and history they represent for a living culture. The urgent need to protect these locations is also a global concern. As climate change continues to cause sea levels to rise, more of the world's ancient coastal heritage is at risk. 
Australia's sunken cities are a powerful reminder of what was lost and a warning of what we stand to lose. They are a call to action for all of us to appreciate and protect the history that lies hidden beneath our oceans. The future of archaeology isn't just about digging, it's about listening. Listening to the ancient stories, listening to the ocean's silent whispers, and most importantly, listening to the voices of those who have been the guardians of this history for over 65,000 years. We stand at a crossroads of history. We've explored the echoes of a lost world, witnessed the incredible resilience of a people who adapted to an epic flood and challenged our very definition of what makes a civilization. But the truth is, this is just the beginning. Imagine Australia's vast continental shelf, a sprawling landscape of over 2.5 million square kilometers, most of it unexplored. For every one discovery we have made, there are countless more waiting to be found. The technology we use today is only the first step. The future of discovery lies in a new generation of high-resolution seafloor mapping, autonomous underwater vehicles, and even deeper, more sophisticated archaeological techniques. This isn't just a mission for scientists. It's a monumental journey for all of humanity. These sunken cities are more than just ruins. They hold the potential to rewrite our entire understanding of human migration. For decades, our textbooks told a story of our ancestors traveling across land bridges, settling in a predictable, linear fashion. But the story of Australia's submerged continent suggests a far more dynamic and complex narrative. It shows us that early humans were not just surviving, they were thriving in complex coastal societies, adapting to a world that was in constant, dramatic flux. This evidence could change the timeline of human ingenuity and innovation forever. This is a powerful moment, not just for archaeologists, but for all of us who care about our shared past. These discoveries are a testament to the incredible depth of Indigenous Australian history, a history that has been continuously woven for over 65,000 years. They validate ancient oral traditions and provide a tangible, breathtaking connection to a sacred past. The story of Australia's sunken cities is not just a scientific finding. It is a profound cultural awakening, proving that a history once dismissed as myth is in fact a monumental reality. But this new chapter comes with a responsibility. The ocean, while preserving these sites, is also a constant threat to them. Rising sea levels, ocean acidification, and human activities like deep-sea trawling and resource extraction put these priceless historical libraries at risk. They are a warning, a glimpse of what we have lost, and a reminder of what we must protect. So, where do we go from here? This journey into the deep isn't just for a few specialized researchers, it's for all of us. This is your invitation to be a part of this unfolding story. We can support the research, we can advocate for the protection of these sites, and most importantly, we can learn. Learn about the rich, complex, and living history of the Aboriginal people. Read their stories, listen to their voices, and appreciate the depth of their connection to the land and the sea. The ocean guards secrets deeper than we can comprehend. But as we've seen, those secrets hold the key to an entire forgotten civilization. This isn't the end of a film. It's the start of an unprecedented journey. Let's dive in, listen closely, and help reveal the forgotten story that has been waiting for us, silently, beneath the waves.